Happy Friday, everybody. It is May 5th, 2023. It's a Friday. Friday 5th. Oh, yeah, baby. Everybody said Friday never arrives. It's a myth. Guess what? We're living it. And yet here we are. Check the calendar. Scoreboard. Boom. We are coming at you live for all of the weird things and your Miami Grand Prix live news. No news Mm -hmm. for you just yet. And they said, uh, and a child shall prophesy it. And lo, Rebecca did you see, Black did proclaim that uh, someday there would be a Friday. Bryce, did you see there was a art, and I don't know if it was official or not, but it was for F1. And it was uh, 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 clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Uh, and it was all the F1 drivers in football uniforms. <laughs> and it was for the Miami Grand Prix, which is like, Really, really funny because they race in Austin. That would be the thing you would do in Austin, right. where Friday Night Lights was filmed, and and obviously is more influenced by a parking lot in Miami Gardens, which yeah. is where the F1 race is happening. Uh, uh, I, I I I do not, you know. Yes, it is next to a football stadium, so I yeah. guess that's all that the whatever intern made that. I think that's, and this is on the official F1 Instagram. Uh, clear eyes, full hearts, Miami Grand Prix. I think last year they had, I think they had, uh, normally they give the podium like a hat, like a Pirelli branded hat. Yeah. Uh, last year they had football helmets for that as well. Yeah. Um, well, because it is, it is right outside of football. It's, it's and also, stadium. if you just look at that neighborhood and, and Maine knows it, it's, it's you know, the, the, the Joe Robbie stadium that like, uh, it's there's nothing around it at all. Like it is, yeah. it is a fairly, it is like next to a highway, which is great to get out of the stadium. But other than they that, go under, uh, they go under I, one of the exits of that highway. Did I ever tell you about the souvenir my brother and I got from the Miami Grand Prix the one year we went? No, no, that, that, that was when it was down in Miami. They actually like closed down streets yeah. and stuff. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. Well, what'd you get? Um, what was your souvenir? When you're a kid, seems like a perfectly cool souvenir. But uh, there's a piece of the Lowenbrow car sitting somewhere. Because <laughs> 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 while we're there, the Lowenbrow just sh- hit the wall and shattered and fiberglass went everywhere. My brother picked up this piece that's got like the label and all that. On. Amazing. <laughs> that's a and good souvenir. It just felt like the most... It, it felt like a pinata. It felt like the most normal thing. Not that there was a driver in there. Yeah. Not that somebody was going, oh, my God, this could be the end. But like, oh, cool. We got a collectible. Hooray. We can bring jagged fiberglass back home. <laughs> <laughs> and that was old school 80s fiberglass. Was it, was it, was it, was it that little fella? Maybe? Yeah, I think it was a little grayer, but yeah. Oh, that was, was the, 78. That, that that maybe in the low and brown color. Yeah. 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 But yeah. That wow. Was a piece of that. Piece of history. That's cool. That's bonkers. That'd be yeah. that'd be really cool As to have. Kid, you're just like, I guess this is what you do, <laughs> you know. And I just you just pick up smash every now and then like a pinata. Yeah, that's the best part. I do Sorry guess the, the only other thing that's in that neighborhood is a horse track and a strip club. Wow, so just a whole day. Your whole day's right there. I mean, look, welcome to South Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe maybe high lie. Okay, yeah. No, High is not game. down there. Actually, uh, they closed down Daniel High No. The world's fastest game, yeah. The world's fastest uh, game. Yeah, no, they, 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 they finally got their wish, and That's they're now so able dope. to take that over and uh, uh, just put in more slot machines. Like, uh, uh, it was very, very pleasurable to get down the knack of whipping a ball at 100 miles an hour to crack against a wall and then catch it again. That was, that was a great day. Super fun. I don't know why I said yeah like I was there. In, in for as <laughs> oh, many times yeah. as Brian has told the story, <laughs> you were. Yeah, I think there's not much left to <laughs> outside of the fully immersive VR experience. And you can live the experience with us <laughs> in VR uh, and learn about the all new Rev Four. Oh my goodness! Uh, all right, you guys want to do a weird thing? Let's go. Yes, yes. You ready to go, Andrew? Ready. All right, I'll catch you in in three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello. Justin Robert Young. Well, hello, friends. 
Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hey, Andrew, thank you so much for having me back on the show. What is this <laughs> tone that I've brought to the beginning of the show? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you dropped this. I was doing this. Kind of audio about. listeners, Bryce is doing a thing as if he's a 1930s cartoon character where he's putting like like one arm, uh, like forearm in front of the other as if he's walking down the street. And that was the momentum that began him having the long introduction <laughs> that has ever been done on this show hi everybody <laughs> all right gentlemen i'm gonna jump right in i need all y'all to close your eyes okay mm -hmm. close your eyes close your eyes uh do you each of you remember what everybody is wearing oh my yes. goodness uh, uh i uh, uh who wants to go first oh i would fail I'm going to get them all wrong. Oh, Bryce, then you go first. Okay. <laughs> Justin, you're wearing, I think you're wearing jeans, blue jeans, and a gray colored shirt. Brian, I think you're wearing a a black colored shirt and cargo shorts. I mean, that certainly would be a narrative in character. Uh, uh, I That's believe my guess. Uh, that Justin is wearing. Right, I'm on camera too, Bryce. Oh, you, you oh no! Me. Oh no! I'm sorry. Andrew. Andrew's got a brand new haircut, and it looks great and very sharp. Um, I, I don't remember what colored clothes you're wearing. I'm just waiting for Andrew okay, to say, "What else? if I told any you other... I'm not wearing a tie at all?" <laughs> <laughs> um, anything? Any other tie? Yeah. Uh, hat. Justin's probably wearing a hat. I think. All right. What kind of hat? What color is the hat? Okay. He's wearing. Oh, it's his black hat on a hat. It's his hat on a hat shirt where the, the embroidery okay. is the hat on the hat. Brian? Uh, I am almost certain that Justin Robert Young is wearing a cocaine and rhinestones t-shirt, which I believe is white with a yeah. uh, red border and uh, uh, blue or violet font uh, uh, art. Um, I believe Justin is wearing uh, blue jeans. I think Bryce is Not wearing more. a black shirt. I think you're wearing a black shirt, Andrew. Um, I don't think Justin is wearing that hat. Oh, all right. Justin? I believe that uh, Bryce is wearing a shirt with Japanese script on it, a black shirt with white Japanese script on it. Um, I believe that Brian is wearing a black shirt, but I do not know what the design is. And Andrew is wearing a black shirt, and I do not know what the design is. Um, and as a Christian man, I don't look below the waist, so uh, I will so not you, hazard a guess. You wouldn't be able to guess as to what kind of footwear nope, any of us are wearing? No, sorry. Not for free. Not, no, my, not, for free. not, not, not these days. <laughs> um, and uh, that's, yeah, that's it. All right, what about you, Andrew? How's your guessing skills? Remembering skills. My though. eyes are wide open, so pretty <laughs> good right now. <laughs> can, we, can we can open, we open our eyes? Open your eyes. One kind of thing got sort of missed. Um, we got you get the hats. We got the black. I'm wearing my black hoodie and sweatshirt. Call it a is shirt. It my, You're wearing a hoodie though. Is is it yeah. my my glasses? No, nah, no, nah, we know that. Oh, okay. Got the hat on the hat. Uh, yeah, Bryce's, we, I would say the, the pretty. I would say you guys did great. I would say the Bryce being wearing a hoodie would be the one thing I'd sort of call out. Okay, it was a hoodie. But, but I remember the exact design. Yeah, oh, oh, and I had the sleeves no, but, rolled but up. I was so. totally wrong. I did not know you were wearing shorts. No, oh, I am wow. wearing shorts. Yeah, and, yeah. Then Brian's wearing pants, not yeah. shorts. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. that's a that was a so check a out these detail check out the, these gams. Well, not for free. <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> so. But I think you guys did pretty good. I mean, I, I, I'd be honest with you, if I'd closed my eyes, again, I'm not in the room with you all, but uh, Justin is now showing his legs. <laughs> very big foot, hairy legs. <laughs> uh, Abominable. Yeah. Onlyfans.com slash sassy squat. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, I'm sure if, if I was participating, I wasn't in the room with you all to see, but I, I'm really bad about that kind of thing. I don't think I would have guessed accurately, accurate at all. I'm pretty impressed. Uh, I, 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 I did not know that there was any image on your shirt. Um, oh, yeah, I, you got to start. It's hard to see, though. Yeah. It's hard to see, okay. so it's yeah. not. Yeah. What did we uh, miss? There's something. It, it sounds like we missed something big, though. No, 
No, oh, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, it, 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 yeah. We got real close. Real yeah. close. Good, good, good marks. Thumbs up. We we beat we yeah. beat memorization. We beat him. Yeah. Read it. Well, Bryce, you did it. No, you did. You're pretty good. Uh, the words cocaine on Justin's shirt were pretty big. Cocaine, yeah. yeah. That, that, that is one of those no. things that sort of leaps out at you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian, yeah. Brian correctly identified my stained cocaine in rhinestones t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought this up because I watched a video clip last night of Harry Lorraine doing his audience bit. And Harry Lorraine, for those of you who don't know, uh, was a prolific magician but also a memory expert who wrote a number of books on memory and perhaps introduced it to more people like memory techniques than anybody else. And Harry Lorraine's a fascinating guy. He had a really difficult childhood, you know, barely kind of brought himself up by his own bootstraps, taught himself some incredible skills from memory, et cetera. He would get, when he was a kid, his father would hit him every time he got bad grades. So Harry started to learn how to improve his memory and then taught his classmates. And that led to, at one point, he wanted to like sell courses, and he would go. He went to do like a demonstration in front of a bunch of people and remembered all their names. And there weren't a lot of signups for the courses, but an agent's like, "You could just go do this, like, yeah, as a gig." And he did that for, gosh, maybe 50, 60, 70 years. You know, I Harry am... would be a very old guy, and. Just I, a fascinating I, person. I think he passed away. Was he 97 when he passed away? He was within the last Something few like weeks. That, yeah. 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 Wow. And, uh, and, and along the way, also just invented some of the most brilliant magic techniques ever. But uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, also uh, a prolific and sharp-witted writer in many an online forum. Far. Oh, he was a, he was a lurker? He was oh, no, no he was poster. a talker. Oh, he, was a poster. <laughs> he was a poster. He was in a very yeah. aggressive poster. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now go, go back to that video clip that you're looking at mm -hmm. uh Bryce describe. You guys want to describe what's going on? Yeah, th this is uh, uh if you've ever seen a clip of the Beatles performing where a bunch of <laughs> girls in black and white are fainting. This was what was on the other channel. Like this is just the same exact style of that that classic 50s um, it's, is it 58? Yeah, so this is a clip yeah. from I've Got a Secret from 1958, and it's Harry Lorraine. Uh, he uh, 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 had the members of the studio audience give all of their names to him, has them stand up, and one by one is, is saying, "Count." I'm going to say your name. When I say your name, sit down, and you see a row of people uh, just sitting. Yeah, he, he he goes through before the show and he introduces himself to several hundred people, every person in the audience. Mr. Hoppin family, Mr. and Mrs. Hoppin, there was Dorothy Hoppin and Esther Hoppin, Mrs. Pollock, and way in the corner, it's a little dark there, but I believe that's Mrs. Stern. Uh, let me start from this end again. I'll go across the next row. All right, row. we'll start okay? back in the second row and go across there. Okay, if I can see correctly, I believe that's Mr. Rutherford and uh, Mrs. Anderson is in between the Rutherfords. There's Mrs. Rutherford the on the other side of the The visual is extraordinary to see people Mr. sitting Mr. down one at a time. That correctly. This is easy because and he's doing it so fast. I mean, you hear him. Mr. Watney and Mrs. Watney. Uh, that's so impressive. That's, you, hell, uh, that, seem, that seems like a, a, an act I would go see multiple times. Like, that is so, just, so just impressive. Just to figure out what, what the trick is, and eventually you'd realize, uh, no. oh, wait, maybe oh, no, he could he just do it. it <laughs> no, just, I want to just, that's so impressive. I would I would yeah. just watch someone do that. Bryce, it's, would you would you get his master class? The Harry Lorraine, like, oh, hi, if it helped me remember. I'm, I'm Harry Lorraine, uh, uh, <laughs> and I remember that you JDS need to comment. buy my master class. <laughs> you see JDS3K's comment? <laughs> They had to yeah. go from the neck down. <laughs> His brain was too sexy. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the Elvis thing they had to do from the way. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, wow. Yeah. So just talk about that for a moment. Somebody says, so not photographic memory. There, There's actually very little clinical evidence that there's, or in laboratory evidence that anything like real photographic memory exists. Um there are people who have very strong memories. They talk about eidetic memory. There are some people who have, you know, there are some people who are like some uh, savants who maybe have like, you know, they can look at a landscape and record it. But like, you often hear these things are sort of exaggerated. There's at least one person out there you may have seen on documentaries and stuff who said that he suffered like a stroke when he was a kid. And now he has like this incredible memory. 
and I'm not going to name names. Yeah, that, 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 I, I feel like there's, it, like, it feels like every few years that there's a group of people, if not one specific dude, that that explains, like, you know, like, they, they just name a random date, and he's like, oh, it was bing, 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 yeah. and ding-dong-doob. Well, uh, yeah, uh, but... I, I actually am unfamiliar with the person that's being alluded to here, but I do remember, uh, I, I think there was a documentary uh, or a, a, a featurette, like the girl who couldn't forget or something. And I there, remember being a woman. Yeah. There, there, there's this brilliant moment where they're challenging her. I'm, I want to say on 60 minutes or 2020 or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, like, I think we're thinking of the exact yeah, same. Like, like thing. what date did so-and-so die? And then and she gives the wrong date and they're like, no, I'm sorry, it's whatever. And you're like, no, it had to have been because this happened, this happened, this happened. And uh, and then they fact checked and like the news organization uh, fact checking engine had it wrong and she was right. Um, I, I think I'm remembering a Wired article. Yeah, this is the for Wired Total Recall: The Woman Who Can't Forget. Right, and so uh, th th I'm there's a 2009. There's a journey that uh, that it goes on where it's like, what must that be like <laughs> to remember every single thing? What an amazing photo. Uh, just, just phone it in. But like, <laughs> we need, we need to take, all right, so the story's kind of about this woman. She feels removed from society. Can we, can we, can we go back to the thing I was trying to say, though? Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. 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 <laughs> sorry, we'll go, go explore this. Day. I just want to make clear. Um, not this person, but there is another person you may have seen in documentaries who talked about, who said that he suffered a stroke when he was a child, and now he's got a recall. And I've, you see this guy, like, okay, sounds convincing. But then other people pointed out, you know, he used to write memory courses and sell them. You know, he claims he doesn't use any methods, doesn't know them. But then you find out that he actually did sell memory methods. He did do this stuff. And every demonstration he does is something that people who do the memory championships are able to do. Yeah. And these people who win these memory championships, who remember pi to like 2,000 digits, they will tell you they do not have extraordinary memory. They will tell you that they're just regular people learned it. And so there might be some medical cases like that. So let's, I'll throw it back to this now. Well, uh, so so in the case of the woman who couldn't forget, uh, and by the way, I'm beginning to pick up on who I think you're alluding to, um, the uh, the analysis of the Wired article suggested that, among other things, she um, uh, uh, was was a very diligent uh, writer of diaries, and also would very very often go back and reread her own diaries, and. Then the question became, well, is this memory or is this mm, uh, maybe memorization? Well, or like an OCD like uh, desire to re remember every single day uh, of your own life. And so you remember the moment that, you know, for example, like I can't tell you what day the challenger exploded, but I, but I have a vague feeling of that. If I were to write a diary every single day and reread that diary, constantly i probably could tell you every single commercial before and that, after and that's they call that autobiographical memory and that's one of the things that you'll sometimes hear people say like this woman we've heard of there's a famous actress they say oh she's got a photographic memory like and she has really strong autobiographical memory and like these people to my knowledge and i don't want to diss anybody when you bring him into a clinical setting and you you give them like hey here's this stuff look at this recall this their recall is just about the same as anybody else it's the process, as you described, Brian, is like, yeah, that they go diarize it later on, they recall it, they go back, they read it, and they reinforce that over time. Where photographic memory, the in the popular idea is we think that it's like just somebody just walks into a room, they walk out, they can tell you every single detail. Well, and, and that's elusive. And, and to be honest, uh, I, 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 on a personal level, I'm glad all of us acquitted ourselves pretty well. However, we also work with each other Many times a week, every single week. Sure. You we, guys were hanging out before this, I presume. Uh, yes, and we can what are you, probably cops? name. Well, you walked in at the same time. We Shut can, up. We can probably. <laughs> this is name, my detective story. Okay, I will admit that it was it was about an hour ago that I'm like, man, Justin just walks around wearing a shirt with the word cocaine on it, <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and that was definitely part Thanks. of why I I remembered it. Um, uh, and and I think that's something very clever you did, Andrew. Is you didn't give us a chance to prepare because, of course, you know when it comes to uh, uh, moments like these, you, nobody's given the chance to prepare. You just have to, and and to some extent. You rely on the heuristic of what do I know this person has in their closet? Like, for example, <laughs> um, uh, uh, a giant pink shirt with a middle finger saying, uh, take that, dad. 
is, as far as I know, not something that is congruent with my understanding of Bryce's clothing. So as a result, I can write that one off. No, off he knows that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce would never got, jock. Justin's got the daddy issues. He would the never issues. jock my steez. <laughs> never. I would leave your steez well alone. Well my friend. alone. <laughs> so a just a side note for our listeners a great book on the subject is uh moonwalking with einstein with josh fior and i've talked about him before he was a journalist who went to go cover like the usa memory championship and started talking to some of the people hanging around there because he's expecting to run into people with photographic memory just these super like you know dune mintat type people and they're just like regular dudes. They're like regular people. And he starts talking to one of them afterwards. They're like, yeah, no, we're all like just regular people that got into it. And then they're like, yeah, you could do this too. Like these were like European. And like, yeah, you could win the USA championship because apparently that's like the easiest one. Like it's like, yeah, yeah, we could train you. He's like, oh, interesting. And go writes his article. He's like, huh, maybe I should take up this offer. So Yor goes and starts to study, learn memory techniques. And early on, he goes to a psychologist and has his, does a test to see how good his memory is. And it's, you know, around average or so. Goes through, does all these memory practices and exercises, learns that. And we'll talk about a couple of those techniques a little bit. But uh, goes back next year to the USA World Memory Championship, having spent a year. And there's a lot of little snarking about like, oh, you know, this is like a guy goes to a basketball game. Now he thinks he's going to play, you know, the NBA championships. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, you know, um, some of the other, you know, people, the long time people played it were just amused by the fact that he showed up and Josh won. That's amazing. <laughs> That's uh, cool. and, and, and there are certain best practices. So let's hypothesize that um, uh, most people in this tournament discovered a natural affinity for being able to remember things that doesn't mean that they came in fully weaponized with up to the minute best practices you know uh, they they probably learned on their own as they went through it whereas uh whereas this author is just like uh, uh give give me the 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 pure oh. fusion energy sauce i mean I don't know. I mean, when you talk to the people, some of the world champions and stuff, they will tell you they were, they saw a demonstration that were curious. They read a book on how to do it and they did the same path that he did that they, they literally weren't, did not have, they weren't like, you know, your track, like their teachers, like, my God, your memory, you need to go to the memory Olympics. They were yeah. like watching TV. Like you watch like someone like Tony Buzan, who I think it was him. He was one of the big, big guys from Britain for him. It was just watching somebody do a thing on some like TV show and go, Oh my God, how does he do that? And like, Oh, there's a trick to it. It's just a memory method. Oh. And then just really actually did take to it. Kind of like Fjord did. I mean, Fjord had the benefit of like a lot of experts giving advice, but the international championships are much harder, much, much, much harder. And that was a different state. Cause you know, but in the end, like when they've tested, when psychologists have gone through and tested these people who do these things, they find they're just average people, but it's, the skills and you start to pick them up, like, you know, the method of loci, which is the the oldest method that is, you know, the method of loci is basically the idea of placing things in a memory palace. And the story that where that came from was there was a uh, uh, an orator who had gone to go do a speech and he's doing this speech in the middle of this big banquet. And then somebody calls him outside. And as he goes outside the banquet hall, collapses and when all of the people are trapped and whatever there's nobody left to sort of figure out like you know like all the everybody's dead and the families wanted to know you know who who you know where was you know who's my mother where's my father because the bad you know bodies were just smashed this was a simon uh Simides of seos okay so anyhow he went outside, but he was doing this lecture or whatever oration for the people. Remember, or memory and oration were such big classic ways of entertaining each other. These were skills that we sort of diminished with reading. But anyhow, he was able to say, okay, I remember, you know, uh, Vinius was sitting at the table to the left. Next to him was, you know, Jovius. Next to him was this. He was able to recall the location of every single person in the hall wow. into, I mean, again, my, I heard this story multiple times, but I'm like, 
How do we know he was right? <laughs> well, and, <laughs> you know, and was, even if he's not, he right. had a he had a no. table he had a table uh, map the, you know, the seating chart on his hand. Well, and and also if this was like a high society function, I would imagine like we've all been there where you go into a party and it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna not mess this up. I'm gonna make sure to learn everyone's names and what they do because I'm meeting everybody for the first time. Or in this case, I could imagine, you know, him thinking like, I want to impress everyone with my ability to be present. And so if he was logging and that's the trick is you have to notice because, um, if you don't bother to notice, then there's nothing to hold on to at the moment. Uh, How many times have we shaken a hand and immediately forgotten the name? That's the key thing in every memory thing. They say that, like, Harry Lorraine talks about this. Uh, there's a, a guy named Anthony Mativier who does some really cool YouTube videos. They all talk about it. You have to pay attention. You have to pay attention. So when I go to – I've now – I used to years ago – um, I'm getting more into like memory palaces now, but years ago I used to use associations for like memorizing, you know, just names and stuff. And you know, two things like you just said is like, when you go meet somebody and you get your name, feel free to go, Hey, could you say your name again? Could you say it? Cause actually it doesn't feel like you're inattentive. It feels like you're more attentive, yeah. like you care. And if somebody tells me that that's now you know, use, you use like memorization techniques. So like if Brian says, my name's Brian Brushwood. I would imagine that like he's parting his hair in the middle with like a big piece of wood, you know, and it's filled with like, oh, you know, briars or wood. something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'd be like, okay, you know, Justin Young, I would imagine a baby with a beard, you know, yep. and I'd be like, ah, oh, you know, young. And so you would just yeah. come up with Accurate these little things. Description. Very much. Bryce, the you more would just absurd. Imagine my, a pink shirt with a middle finger. Uh, no, but that's <laughs> yeah. Justin's. I'm, the, like, I'm not stealing the steeds. Okay. But about the middle finger, the more absurd or outrageous, the yeah. more likely you are to remember it. And that that's one of the things like, I'll imagine with a blue shirt. No, but like, I'll imagine, you know, I'm going to imagine, you know, Bryce throwing rice at everybody, you know, like just okay. throwing rice at everybody, throwing rice at everybody and just this, just. Maybe with a rice you from know, a castle. Farming hat. He lives in a castle and, and he I'm throws a rice. Yeah. At people. I'm in my rice castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Spanish castle. They'll be like, yeah, Spanish. They'll smell like tamales. But anyhow, okay. you start to do these things. <laughs> so when you got to remember, the point is, is it's, 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 I, I make the. There's, there are would, no thought we crimes would, here. We would there's eat. No we would crimes. eat tamales in the Vesotros form. <laughs> yeah. But as Bryce just said, there are no thought crimes here. That is the truth. And you, when you talk to memory experts, they'll tell you they're hesitant to tell you like. No, if I told you what I was thinking right now, you'd think I was a horrible person. So the point is, is you can use these associations and actually like now I make it a habit when I go to a party now and inter introduce everybody is just to remember everybody's name and to do that. I used to do that years ago when I go into classrooms where I would try to remember the name of everybody in the classroom. Um, but it's a thing like anything you practice, you get better at. And I've noticed as I've gotten better at coming up with those like it takes a bit of creativity to come up with those or those visualizations of how you're going to visualize somebody. But the more you practice it, the better you get. There, there's also a little bit of, uh, th there's a vividness and an absurdity to the visual image for those who are visually motivated uh, or, you know, a, a vividness to emotions. If, you know, if you want to project a moment from your life on it or whatever, but then there's also, uh, I, f I find that uh, repetition is so very, very key for this. It's like uh, mm -hmm. whenever I'm, uh, first of all, decide before you shake their hand that you are going to choose to remember their name because if Great you don't point. decide beforehand, you're you're in trouble. Uh, for me, I think three seconds, 30 seconds, and three minutes. If I can say back to their name, uh, uh, you know, oh, hello, Justin, oh, yeah, you're great. Uh, uh, Brian, explain uh, spaced repetition to everybody. Uh, uh, well, as I understand it, basically you're digging. Uh, this is a sloppy metaphor that is unscientific, but I think of it in terms of you're you're digging a trough in your brain to make it easy. And the the deeper the trough, the more the memory is going to stay. So first thing I'll do at three seconds is I'll verify like, and how do you spell that? Oh, that's interesting. Cool. And then now the hard thing is at that point, you want to move on to something else. Instead, you remember your next signpost is at 30 seconds, at which point you say it again. And maybe this time you say it out loud. Uh, and, and you can even anchor a little bit of uh, uh, tactile memory or whatever, like uh, 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 on purpose, like, you know, uh, uh, tap your index fingers twice or something. Just do literally anything mm -hmm. because when you remember a name, you're not remembering the actual name. You're remembering the last time you noticed their name. And then uh, around three minutes, if you can 
uh, uh, past that, I, I find that you can at least remember the name for the rest of the night. For example, the only reason I knew what shirt Justin was wearing was because I was not remembering the shirt. I was absolutely remembering an hour ago when I'm like, Justin just wears a shirt with the word cocaine on it. <laughs> Facts. Uh, great point. And so uh, space repetition is what Brian started talking about is there's really good research on this, and that is that you know you test something immediately or shortly right after. Yeah, you wait a little while, then you wait longer. And there's you know you, you most of you probably heard of this, but pretty well documented research that shows how well this works. And there are applications and stuff where you can say, okay, let me learn these vocabulary words. I'll learn them once you get them. Then you don't see them again for another week. And if you get it that week, you don't see it again for a month. And if you get it right, you don't see another for three months. And then you don't see another for like a year. And some of memory experts, that's how they'll they'll handle a lot of the facts and stuff like this. It sounds like it's a lot, but you could write down like a thousand things you wanted to remember and put them in note cards and use spaced repetition to sort of go through them one by one. And you would find out that eventually it would feel extremely familiar to you, just uncannily familiar to you, even though it's a thousand different items. Well, so and, and space repetition. Th th there's a number of moments where I feel uh, what one of the things... Uh, uh, we we all love audiobooks and we've read a number of them. Um, uh, and uh -huh. there are times uh, uh, I feel like if I make a point, that point is more solid if I'm able to make a accurate citation. So I worry very much that I'm citing things incorrectly. And uh, just earlier this week, I realized while I remember most of the points of the book incognito, I was dangerously close to losing the author's name. And then I stumbled across the name David Engelman. And, uh, and I was like, is that the... And so then all of a sudden, I was able to uh, <laughs> uh, hold back on to that accurate uh, citation. Uh, but, but it absolutely is one of those things where it's kind of uh, logarithmic or... or um, uh, uh, exponential? Yeah, well, mm. yeah, exponentially. I, I usually you can say use geometric, but then sometimes. people get upset because they're all like, geometric, that's not right at all, but it is right. Look <laughs> it up. Okay, so just uh, everyone knows Brian is yes. also smarter than all. Yes. Uh, here's a memory it, technique. Oh, yeah. What is Ladies it? and I gentlemen, forgot. please close your eyes. Mm. There is a landscape, and all of a sudden the sky goes shock pink. <laughs> Arising from the hills, a gigantic middle finger. <laughs> what? What's that on the top of the pad of the middle finger? Why, it's patreon.com slash weird things. Yes, patreon.com slash weird things is where you can support this program. You can head on over there right now. Give us money per week and you get early access to the After Things podcast where we have a good honest and open conversation about what it means to be an independent creator in the year of our Lord, 2023. Remember all of this. If you don't, it could be your last day on earth. <laughs> Holy God. Oh, wow. <laughs> open your eyes. That's very dire. Open your eyes. <laughs> wow. I, should, wow. I feel like I want to give money to patreon.com. That's weird thing. I mean, uh, hopefully you remember I, I to. Mean, next week we'll, Next week, we'll do dive into hypnosis, but I want to stick on memory for a little bit longer. So space repetition, great, great method to remember that, the association stuff. The other one is the memory palace. Any of you guys ever play with that? Uh, I did, but unfortunately, I moved around so much as a kid. Like, I got into it in my early 20s, and I had never lived in a single house for more than two years. And one of the keys to a memory palace is to think of a place that you know backwards and forwards, and you could think of the various rooms, and you know the importance of how things are. Uh, I actually, I think now I would be better able to do it with the map of uh, HQ right now because I, uh, yeah. I, 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 you know, have spent more time here, and I know, uh, having been part of the design of everything, I could, I could have physical places for stuff. But, but to to explain the general conceit, uh, Andrew. Oh yeah, so. One thing that's interesting is the way our hippocampus works. And when we walk into a new room, basically it sort of flashes and we sort of pay attention to sort of the new environment because it's how we look for predators or threats, whatever. And so what this means is part of our spatial awareness, we have a tremendous amount of spatial information, spatial knowledge. You can keep track of a lot of things right now. Like, you know, you could close your eyes and maybe you don't know the specifics of everything, but you have a pretty good idea where everybody is in the room, where things are, whatever. 
And so method of Loki is the idea of take a place that you are familiar with, but I'll, I'll give you a, a, a way you can do that. If you don't have, let's say a house or something you're familiar with, like a couple of the hacks that I use, I'll tell you in a second, but you take a place that you're familiar with, but let's say, let's say, you know, a generic sort of house and you could say, okay, I got to remember 10 objects, right? Like, you know, cup, feather, baseball, bat, whatever you would say, okay, I walk up to the steps and there's a feather laying on the steps and then you go up to the door, but it's actually a baseball you know, bat that I have to do to pull open to open up the baseball. And then you walk inside and there's the next object like sitting on the floor. So you would just take these objects around an environment you're familiar with, put them there, ideally do something a little bit dynamically, you know, so that they're interacting, like the feathers outside sitting on the step. Maybe it's just whistling in the wind, you know, moving a little bit. The bristles are moving. They have to open up and grab the bat to open the door. The more, the more tactile and you have to experience it, you know, if you walked inside and, you know, let's say, like we said, like, you know, it was a cup or whatever we said there was, it could be like, oh, you tripped over the cup as you walk in and it makes a sound. So you basically just take in a familiar environment, you have a path that you always walk through, like the path you always know to go through. And then you can don't have to go to recall it to go through that same pathway, but to place your objects, you would just place it in each step along the way. And you find out that you can start to subdivide places even more. You might say that like, okay, I've got my steps, I got my door but I can look through nailed to the door could be something too. I grab the handle. I notice there's a thing nailed to the door. You can just start adding on. You, you, now, you, you, want, you want to know what's funny is that uh, there's been times where for research, I've had to listen to a lot of audio. Like, so for, for raise the dead season two, I would listen to the entirety of the published uh, LBJ tapes. And so there's a lot of just totally random stuff Toilet flushing. of him uh uh <laughs> there's a lot with lpj <laughs> uh but uh uh the way that i would remember stuff on how to find it uh even if i didn't get like the time code if i would remember in the process i'm like oh you want to know what there was a thing where he mentioned this person is i would listen back to it and because i would always listen to that stuff while i was walking i could place where i was in my walk at the point that I heard that stuff. And I wasn't like actively trying to do it, but I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I was up by the BMW dealership when I heard this. So that means it couldn't that possibly I, I, I know, be I know the thing seconds. needs to go beyond that. It's after this because I heard it around this point. But there is like, like a, 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 an innate connection mm -hmm. between like, like our experience with stuff like that, especially when it's disconnected. Well, that's kind of the core thing when we say the words reminds me of this yeah. reminds me of there's a connection to something else but yeah like your walk so uh what a lot of people will do you know there's a guy named nelson dallas who's does it has a youtube channel and he's won a ton of memory championships when he wants to do something new he just finds new paths and so sometimes people might just they make ticket might take a trip somewhere and just go around the block once or twice where they're near the hotel and go okay i've got a new memory palace but not a place to store something one of the things that I do is like I'll start with a very generic place, like an international house of pancakes. Yeah. And then, mm. you know, like I've used IHOP to memorize like all like, you know, like the 50 major countries or whatever. Because those tend to be pretty population. similar architecturally. Mm. In yeah. fact, they're they're probably modular enough or, or replaceable enough that you could, uh, as you're imagining it, build out the, the palace of it. You could really... Uh, Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I hops and Waffle Houses are all pretty much the same. Yeah, Yeah. so I've been working on, like, doing... One of them has more like... fist fights than the other, but... Well, I mean, yes. <laughs> Among, they, they, amongst they, 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 they replicate their floor plan is more what I was saying, but... Uh, yeah. You ain't you ain't you ain't been to the IHOP. Uh, 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 most of my Florida group oh, chat has been banned good. from the IHOP on uh, University Boulevard. IHOPs pop off, and Dude, the staff. The Waffle are not ready. House that used to be near there. Um, oh, the one in the to... one in Davie. Yeah, <laughs> it was good. Good yeah, for a murder uh, the, the year. Tri the triple homicide. Yeah, I used to go there and stop going there for a while. Then there was a triple homicide, and it was like, oh. and it was. It was right across yeah. the street from a mausoleum. Well, that's just convenient. Uh, that's, yeah. So. Uh, just but walk you take it across like the this. Road. So like oh, right. I have like I have a go-to one for me is like a museum, but it's like you walk up the steps, there's a door, there's a person with a desk, there's a corridor behind it, there's a hall, there's all these different places. Like I use that a lot. Like I have this museum that I'll just place things into. And you could start building up sort of these generic kind of memory palaces. You just have to like, you know, you know, basically assemble them from things you've seen before, but ever create them. But you could create several. Like you can create a lot of them, and then you can start to have 
Oh, uh, you know, uh, uh, when, sorry to interrupt. Uh, have you heard of uh, doing just a body list? That was the first one that I learned. It's uh, 10 items. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 uh, you, yeah. What is that? Uh, body well, list? Uh, uh, you got 10 points on your body, right? Think of your toes, your ankles, your shins, your knees, your thighs, your waist, uh, uh, your core, your neck, your uh, uh, mouth, eyes, mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe you would and with I have a lot more parts than that. The, yeah. the top of your crown. But I've got elbows. But let's say uh -huh. let's say there were ten, I've got knees. ten items yep. that you needed. Big knees. Okay, so this is where we get to part of what lodges things in with creative visuals is they should be surprising and transgressive where you kind of surprise yourself with it. So uh, uh, if if we're making up a grocery list, uh, 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 what what's the first item on the grocery list? Uh, tofu. Tofu. Well, okay. So I'm gonna think. Uh, oh Christ! I'm gonna die because my toes have literally turned to tofu. I picture myself trying to save my daughter, but my feet crumble from the soft mm -hmm. tofu, and all of a sudden I fall on my face and I die. And from a great height, my child falls down and is killed. I will oh, never wait, forget that like item tofu. one is tofu. Yeah, I should have went extra firm, my guy. Uh, great, and that joke will also solidify. Yeah. Uh, and then second item from there, or whatever, you 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 contextualize yeah. it with horrific imagery. <laughs> so I the, the body when I used the body one, and then I played with the idea of what if I had to remember space stuff and I put on a spacesuit, and then I had the pockets and the belt and the helmet and that, and I could do different thing patches and stuff. And like you could take that because you could then say, okay, oh, I'm gonna put on a tuxedo. What's in the tuxedo? Oh, this is what's in the tuxedo. This is what's in there. So, yeah, you can basically just start to come up with these connections. The other one, the first one I learned before actually the Memory Palace was just the narrative, was the story. And then this happened, and then this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened. Yeah, Aristotle had said something to the effect on the idea of story, that a good story is something you can hold the complete story in your head. Mm. And which is an interesting sort of way to think about like, oh, yeah, is it something too convoluted? But if you sort of say like, why did this? And that's called like chaining is one of the things they call or uh, memory journey, you know, so, but there is some memory journeys can be also sort of visual or whatever. It doesn't have to be a memory palace. You can just construct something in your head that says, this is here and this is connected to here. And if you understand those connections, then it can lead you on a pretty cool path. So, uh, uh, one of the things that really impresses me are people who are able to take um, fairly benign, boring things like, uh, let's say, numbers and yeah, that card, card suits. Yeah, um, that card suits. So let's say you wanted to memorize a deck of cards. Uh, remembering it as a group of individual numbers would be hard. But let's say you go through, and there are uh, you know two clubs uh, in a row, and one is a three and one is a four. I might instantly think about the uh, uh, basketball club, the Houston Rockets. Number four was Hakeem Olajuwon, uh, and and I can make up an image with that, right? Mm. And then, uh, uh, and to be honest. Uh, it would be kind of an interesting thing. Uh, eventually, the best of them uh, are able to have like four digit pegs where they're thinking about either specific years or five dig digit pegs where it's like, I will never forget my own zip code. So now let's say there happens to be five numbers in a row that exactly match my dis or, or my, my own zip code or are off by one digit or whatever. But now all of a sudden I'm, I'm only dedicating one thought to five units of information. Um, and then anyway, mm. uh, uh, yeah. No. Uh, uh, if, if, if figuring out pegs for different numbers helps. Yeah, there's there's a few different systems you can use for numbers. Um, when I wanted, yeah, when I wanted to do deck of card memorization, you know, I had like monomics that I would use for like, you know, what was like, you know, what was a cat, what was this, like for each sort of like card, and then I would just tell a narrative for each time I did that. And then the problem was I would practice. I'd go to bed at night and I'd have like four decks of cards stuck in my head. <laughs> and, yeah. and that's all I could think about. And I'm not a memory champion. And that's not what I want to be going to sleep at night was <laughs> thinking about recalling like decks of you know cards in order. Yeah. So uh, you'll see like, I think the record something like 50 or 52 complete shuffled decks memorized. Oh, wow. Holy crap. That is yeah. a lot of cards. 52 decks, not cards. Decks. Yeah, decks. 52 decks. 52 decks. Line them we up. We teach you in a day how to do a deck of cards. Yeah, man. Like, you could be taking 2,000 cards. Tomorrow. Wow. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. So, yeah, Clear your weekend. Some, yeah. Really, really fun. The reason I bring all this up is 
I don't know about you, but I'm using AI all day long. I'm using AI for everything. I, uh, uh, you know what? Uh, uh, you broke the seal first because that was going to be a recommendation. Like if you want to figure out, let's say uh, you, you wanted to figure out some four-digit pegs for things, just ask what happened in this year. And yes, we all know a boat sank. But then <laughs> if, when you get answers, then all of a sudden you have visuals that you could hold on to. Yeah. Well, I wasn't even trying to go that way. I just mean that, like, I think that as we start using AI and stuff for more and more tasks, reading gave us a lot of benefits. But with reading, we sort of lost a lot of our skill at memorization and oration, an oratory rather. And so, like, I think that, like, with AI stuff becoming more, not less, like, I don't think there's a point where we're going to dial back what we have now and the amount of, you know, amount of things that I use it for. It's going to probably be like the norm for everybody soon. I do think mm -hmm. there is something to say about building up our mental skills. Well, and, uh, you know, we've we've speculated before about augmented reality experiences and about uh, I know that I have wished for a pair of glasses that would identify all the faces in the room and remind me of blank, blank, blank. Like Terminator vision. Yeah, exactly. But, but yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, not yeah. no modifications. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, no, no, no. Because like, <laughs> Terminator Vision is just identifying it. It could say "kill now," like, but you just don't click. Yes. Uh, you, uh, yeah, ignore that. I don't. I, yeah. That's the other guy. That's the old owner. Previous yeah. owner had the kill sorry. now bumper sticker. There's a lot to work out with this OS. But my my <laughs> point being, uh, I, I just suspect found it on GitHub. I suspect it'll be a status flex as everybody begins to wear glasses and rely upon the enhancement of real time, you know, face recognition and that kind of stuff. I, I suspect that uh, y you will be a more interesting person if you have the talent to just access more stuff without clearly almost like a magic trick without needing to lean on it. Bryce, why are you showing? You've just queued up the what? thing that always makes me mad. But the, it, the it's stupid Google Glass demo. This like, is that was just fraudulent. Just but, straight out fraud. And a good idea still. Oh it is no 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 still yes. a good idea. No, still a good idea. Yeah. I would do it's a great idea. Teleporters from Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Equally you know. good. I would still like Equal to have that product. Warp uh, speed. That's turns a good out idea. we're very very far away if, if what they delivered was what they delivered yeah that was <laughs> that was a thing the price just showed the google glass video and the thing but the most frustrating part about it for me is as the person looks around they show the things that you know centered in their view like it's augmented reality and then when you get the thing and you realize it's a little thing in the upper corner you know that it's like in one eye <laughs> you're like oh, it was it was a gray crt it like tele like like a black and white crt television that basically just showed alerts from your phone yeah like there was no rich os there was no way to interact with it beyond tapping uh uh your gigantic borg at a key party uh the <laughs> thing well you know what's crazy is that like in the what, decade since since then like we have seen tech miniaturized we've seen chips get more efficient, more power efficient, smaller. Um, but we, but it still feels like it's the frames that are holding us back. The actual just way to show that information somewhere so that you can do something with it. It doesn't seem like anyone's made any moves other than going straight to either virtual reality or total mixed reality where you're doing a, another yeah, like big a, you, full you, goggle. Now, now you have a camera on the front and you can see through it, but yeah. you're still doing a full... Jordy LaForge like the it's it's similar to to chat and AI like it's a question of the shape the physical form of it you know, yeah you, you know they, they can work on the Google Glass UI as much as they want but it's still that just little quarter inch of a of a post-it note up in the corner of your eyes you know it's not the big connected thing that's what yeah. people want they want the science fiction future and not just a, an OS yeah, well, I think that wherever these tools head, what's going to be neat is that you could be building software and applications and platforms to work with it. So if you did have some augmented reality thing or whatever, they could just pop up a thing in front of you and remind you of a thing. So you could just use this stuff to train your memory, to train your capability to improve on it. So I'm hopeful for that. I think that we're going to see, I hope we see a trend towards more of these things because there, there absolutely is a benefit. I mean, the best, I mean, the, the best thing is just, you know, remember people's names. Like, I think that alone, you know, if there's any takeaway, like, that's helpful. Yeah. But, mm. I mean, yeah. I, I, I do think that 
especially as we understand what knowledge is in terms of not only our internet self, but also the AI world wherein you're able to synthesize so much, then there are going to be other elements that, you know, aren't necessarily uh, held to a high regard now or are as looked at as curiosities that we can build up. Yeah. What if remembering things becomes the next knowing things? Things. Well, like, what if it's what if it becomes like trendy to remember specific things instead of leaning on, you know, your mem I'll your photo memories or a chat bot to tell you what happened? Like, oh, I remembered exact. I remember. I I I'm imagining it myself, and I'm doing it with no GMOs and no GMOs. <laughs> uh, uh, also, I am certain that Memory Palace TikTok must already be a thing. But I mean, even more socially, like right now it's like impressive, but I could, Im I'm imagining a Wally -E style world, but instead of everyone just being fat and immobile, it's their brain is just a big chip, but then the cool people remember things. They actually remember. Am I thinking well, of total uh, recall? Is this just total recall? Well, it's just more implanting memories, but yeah, I think but you should get your the, ass to Mars. The, I, I would say one of the, the challenges has been for me is I've been fascinated by this stuff and I try to read up things like, a lot of the examples are very abstract. They're really like, oh, here's if you have to memorize a grocery list. Like, okay, that's really why I'm going to spend like 12 hours practicing this thing every day so I can memorize like what, to, like maybe I should just write this down. And then some of the other ones like, ah, oh, memorize pi to 2000 digits. Like, okay, who, who, wh why? <laughs> you yeah. know, and I get they're great for competitions and the decks of card stuff too like is magic it just realized oh I, I i have a trick called like the zero memorization deck which exactly was like i just created a really good way to fake memorizing a deck because i was just too lazy mm -hmm. but point is is i like what i loved about back to harry lorraine was people in their faces like that's useful that's yeah. really really useful it's just to be able to remember that and it just can make you more engaged and i think that starting from how these things could be useful socially is a different thing because if you said okay take who are these people I met? Okay, what was their job? Where do they work? What do they do this? And if you go deeper than just being able to recall their names to actually remember more details about that person, guess what? You're building up a really good network. You're building up a really good capability resources when somebody says, oh, you know, I need a plumber. And you can be like, oh, yeah, I was at a party three months ago. I spoke to a guy, yeah, really cool guy. He said his brother had a plumbing. Like that ability would be amazing. I, I think that especially as we get older, the idea of building these kind of habits is uh, uh, probably more important than ever. And especially if you were in a place where you meet a lot of people and, and you are often making very, very short uh, uh, relationships, it does, it is a material benefit probably not only to your life, but also to your own brain that you are giving it the kind of work. And I would appreciate everybody thanking Arthur for bringing this up. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. You're a fantastic host of the show, <laughs> and you have been doing so dutifully for over 10 years. Thank you, Arthur. You're welcome, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next week, if we can remember, uh, we'll talk about... Well, we will, and that's a big if. We will talk about... Let's talk about hypnosis. Oh, yeah. That'd yeah, be let's do it. That would be interesting to yeah. give a, 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 You will all come in next week. <laughs> we'll talk about hypnosis. You'll all go to Patreon. Do we have picks? Pick it up. Yes, I, picks. I got one. Uh, pick it, it up. I know we've talked on, pick it up, pick it up. on this program about uh, Will Storr's book, The Status Game. Um, but have we talked about the book he wrote before it? I'm, I'm still working my way through it. Uh, the Science of Storytelling. No, There's, I don't believe we have. No, uh, I, I, I did three laps on the status game. I like it a lot. But the science of storytelling uh, focuses more on what we seek in our characters. And he points out that there are reliable structures. There's not an infinite number of structures, but there does seem to be an infinite number of characters. And uh, I have not seen um, Lawrence of Arabia, but he walks through all of the plot points purely through the question, and all I know about Lawrence of Arabia is that it, you know, had CinemaScope. It was a visual marvel, uh, incredible execution, or whatever. But he says, forget about all that. All that matters is you see the impulse between his conscious and subconscious mind wrestling with his vanity and his rebelliousness. And every story he postulates boils down to the main uh, character, the protagonist, our our proxy for ourselves, asking, "Who am I?" 
that's the hero's journey. You know, uh, they, they figure out, they, well, I don't want to change. Well, maybe I do have to change and pay a horrible price and come back an evolved person. That's who I am. And, uh, and that's how he describes everything in Lawrence of Arabia. It's, it's quite, quite good. But specifically, if you enjoyed the status game, there's a really neat chapter where you can see him stumbling across the idea that would become the entire thesis for the status, status game. It's only one chapter, but he's like, yeah, I'm starting to think that we're all status-seeking engines and that there's really only three types of currencies and uh, 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 we value elevating our status within a game and then we elevate our game. Anyway, back to the science of storytelling. Uh, that was a really cool moment. I highly recommend it. It's, it's as good as uh, the, the status game, in my opinion. There we go, the science of storytelling. Justin, you got a pick? Uh, yes. Uh, my pick is Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Oh. Out in theaters right now. Not yeah. one or two? Not one, well, not two, uh, but three. One pick. If, you had, if you had three picks, would you pick it? Would you delayed, pick it? delayed a few years because of uh, a little kerfuffle on the site Twitter.com. Oh, uh, never heard of it. But uh, but James Gunn here to close out his time with Marvel. It very much feels like a farewell to the Marvel Universe and certainly a farewell to many of these characters. Um, is it better than the last one? Yes. Okay. It is better than two. Good. It's got some of two's pacing. Uh. But when, the, when, when, when it hits, it hits. Um, there are things I thought of while I was watching it. Mm. This is like Peacemaker. This is like Land Before Time. This is like every other Marvel movie or every other James Gunn movie. Like th there, there, were, there is a diverse element here. Um, he obviously loves these characters and he loves these actors. And and some of the long runtime, I think, can be assigned to the fact that he wants to make sure that everybody gets to eat a little bit. Mm. Um, but I, I I thought it was well well worthwhile, and I did enjoy it more than two, which I thought was a lot of shot reverse shot build up for one very good and enriching story. But it comes like two and a half hours in. Yeah. I remain steadfast that no Guardians of the Galaxy movie should be over two hours. You should be wrapping everything up. This is two and a half. So, uh, 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 but still, I I I enjoyed it. Not quite as much as I enjoyed the Suicide Squad, and not quite as much as I enjoyed Peacemaker. Yeah. But I really, really, really love those two things. And, and this one, it's serving a lot of masters. I, I got a question for you, because I understand that this, they had that holiday special come out, and this is adjacent to it. Do, you, do, do I need to go and watch that, nope. too? You need to know one plot point okay. from it. Okay. And it is the final scene in the holiday special. Right, I'll uh, right slice it. I'll be done yeah. in about five minutes. Two two characters. There is an evolution in their relationship, uh, but even then, I was not, Groot. Got it. Yeah, it's there are a few things that okay. when, when, oh, when no, every okay. when everybody <laughs> says it, when everybody sees it, I will nitpick it. Okay. Uh, 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 so, I will I will say this. Say it for Harmontown fans. Look it up. There's a Monopoly man. Okay. In this movie, James Gunn pulls a. Totally disingenuous Monopoly man in this movie. And Rich and Uncle you, Uncle Pennybags? Pennybags? Uh, so in Dan Harmon's uh, uh, two great, one of Dan Harmon's least favorite things mm -hmm. is in a movie, and this is from Ace Ventura 2, where he's like going on this big rant about everything. And then he goes like, and you're like the Monopoly man. And he points at a guy that's dressed like the Monopoly man. No nuance. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it's like, well, that's cheating writing wise because you went to costuming, you you cast the guy who looks like the Monopoly man, you got him the mustache, yeah. you put him in the suit. You put him in the hot dog suit. He's gonna look like a hot dog. Just so, so somebody could guy. say, You look like the Monopoly man. <laughs> yeah. He Dan Harmon is a, a, a famously upset about it on his podcast. He <laughs> rails against it. He thinks it is a total cheap bullshit writing thing. Mm. Uh uh and there is one of those in there, and then there's a few um, other things that I think maybe maybe it's I a have, holiday special. It's gonna be notes. special. No, no, no. Yeah, no. This is yeah. This is three. Yeah, yeah. this is this is okay, the movie. Okay, okay. Uh, but, but yeah. Question. So I'm assuming uh, my 15 year old Josie. Yes. What about my 10 year old Callie? I mean, it's a it's a Marvel movie. Well, but it's a PG 13, and and there the the Rocket story 
is so wholesome okay. in its perspective. Okay. And any adult who's watching it will know this is going to be terrible. Okay. Uh, uh, so I would say for Callie, depending on, I don't know where Callie is between your eldest daughter, who is incredibly empathic and did not like any kind of roller coaster of emotion because she was going to feel every inch of it. Got it. And Josie, who has more of the sociopathic movie taste of like, ah, look at how far the, the head flew. This is amazing. Right. Uh, I don't know where Callie is, but uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 there, there are elements of the rocket backstory that are like kids, good kids movie heartwarming. Yeah. Mm. But it happens to characters that you know are not long for this world. Maybe, oh. uh, maybe, uh, maybe not today then. Probably not today. Yeah. Probably not today. Yeah. No, okay. the, uh, uh, themes of mortality yeah. are heavily played with and explored in this movie. It's no secret that questions of, of which characters survive are kind of out there. I, I, so I didn't oh. know that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. The, uh, what? They're going to kill off a Marvel character? Yeah, cool. Now I've now heard I've everything. Heard yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and also a lot of these actors are are out there saying are also that, dead. They're, that, that they're, they're not with going this to, role. Yeah, they're dying. not going to ever be in the Marvel Universe again. So it's like, take your, take your guess on... All right. right, right. Uh, I've got, I've got, what about you, Bryce? I got to pick. Uh, over the weekend, I had... Uh, uh, a good chance to watch the the first ever defunct land video I've ever seen, uh, which is the fantastic feature Disney's Fast Pass: A Complicated History. Uh, I I am not a Disney person. I didn't grow up with the dream of Disney. I grew up in Virginia, where it is entirely an Iser Bush country, and um, so I've never. I don't know what happens in the Disney parks. I don't care what happens in the Disney parks. I got my own thing going on, um, and so I knew Fast Pass existed. I knew it was a thing. And I think myself, like many of the people mentioned in, in the early part of this video, also did not even know what FastPass was or that it was free for a long time or the, any number Hell of yeah. things. Um, and oh, yeah. You, and you, you, it follows this multi-decade long journey of trying to figure out how to get people in and out of a theme park uh, as fast and as satisfied as possible. And uh, uh, and it's really interesting. I, there's a whole. I mean, it's an it's an entire feature length um, documentary. We've talked about it before on this program, I'm sure. Um, but uh, if you haven't, if you haven't seen any of the Defunct Land ones, I think this is a really good one to to jump in on uh, because it is about the parks, but it's also a lot about like the operations, how line queues work, the theory behind line queuing, um, and some of the things that Disney did. I mean, Disney spent a billion plus dollars on these different systems over the years. Um, nobody else has, and it's fascinating. So, uh, highly recommended Disney's Fast Pass and Defunct Land. Yeah, there. Uh, I've been well aware, especially in the Orlando brand of theme parks, the different solutions that people have tried to play with. Uh, Disney was a early adapter of uh, get there, hit a button, come back later, like basically like a instant rain check system. Yeah. Universal went with a- Who's got your, money? Yeah, <laughs> at, at your point of ticket purchase, would you like to pay us a hundred extra dollars and not wait in line? Uh. Um, which is what it what FastPass seemed like it was. It would always seem like, oh, that's just the rich people putting their pass. And I guess at some point when it became paid, it was kind of well, like that. Well, now, yeah. So now it's paid, and then they they and wanted to bundle it into the hotels and stuff, and they did magic hours. Like, there's like a bunch of different ways that Disney has uh, uh, explored this. It, it is unsurprising that they have spent the most money, the most research, the most time, and have tried the most bold solutions when it comes to this problem. And and now. They have found themselves in a particularly uh, uh, money-centric <laughs> version of it. There, there is a great, I think, 10 to 15-minute segment of this documentary where um, Kevin Perjurer explores the idea of how do you have the same people in the same place, only one type of person has spent years, multiple years, fastidiously planning for everything they want to get out of this experience. Because they'll only go once ever in their entire lifetime. And yet, and, and another set of people who are like, yeah, no, I go all the time. I, oh, God, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to go to Space Mountain. I'm just looking for some churros. Right. Like, yeah, you, and, and that is, like, 
it almost feels like a dirty part of the story of figuring this out. Like, well, you know, your most, your biggest, most fan, well, you have to find a way to give them the worst experience because you have actual once in a lifetimers who will be unlimited sad at Disney because they couldn't go on Space Mountain. Right. Yeah. Um, which is fascinating. I mean, it's, it's an issue of scale, but it's a fascinating one nonetheless. So uh, highly recommended to Land. Cool. Yeah, it's good. Any other picks, fellas? Uh, you know what? Uh, Andrew is trying to chime in. Andrew, I'm sorry. We don't have time. Oh, no, no picks for you, Andrew. Yeah, we'll get sorry. back to you next but time. But actually, no, wait, hold on. He's calling in on my phone. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, here he goes. Uh, uh, I'm Arthur Maine. <laughs> it's been weird. <laughs> wow. Boop, boop, boop. That's it. <laughs> Thanks, Arthur. <laughs> All right. That'll do it for Weird Things, everybody. Um, oh. Well, well, we had an email for after things, but it's very chat GPT focused and I kind of wanted to do it with uh, Andrew. uh, I don't mind punting. I I do have some uh, some stuff to sell. Okay, yeah, I think we'll do that. Um, uh, but uh, 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 Russell Berry, who wrote this, and maybe that's why you tuned in, sorry. Uh, 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 fantastic. Man, it's like exactly based on the, fu- the friggin' thing we t- did weird things on today, too. But um, maybe that's why we did it. Oh, well. Uh, we'll hold off onto this until we have an Andrew here to help us, because we'll, I don't know. We'll I make it up to you next time. time. Yeah. Um, but uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for enjoying us. Enjoying us. Uh, uh, Please enjoy us more. Yeah. On, uh, on on the stream here on Twitch, we'll be back on Monday with Cord Killers. Tuesday's a great night. Marbles on Thursdays. Anything else? Uh, all the things. All the things. There we go. Everybody, have a good rest of your e your day and your evening. Bye bye.